Well, folks, uh, this is not like the school I went to. When they said we were going to speak outside, I, I, I wondered, why the hell are we going up all these stairs? <laughs> I thought we'd be out in the parking lot. I mean, for real. That's what I thought we were going to be. Elijah, thank you for the introduction. And Jill and I, along with Secretary Cardona and Mayor Bowser, are here because we want you to know how very proud, how very proud of you and your classmates we all are. I also want to thank Principal Richardson. I was kidding him. I was saying, I, I, this, this school is really something else. And the way we talked about the interfacing of all the students and the social education is taking place and how things are changing. And, uh, and Chancellor uh, uh, Farabee, I, uh, I told you, I think that's maybe the harder job than about anything I can think of. But thank you. You're doing a heck of a job. We know uh, the start of a school year is an excellent time to mix anticipation and nervousness. And the pandemic adds to that mix uh, of emotions. And I think, uh, I think about all the parents I've talked to since the start of this pandemic, worried about the loss of learning that their child, the missed opportunities their child is having because so many of them had to stay at home, all had to stay at home. But so many of them didn't have access to the internet, didn't have access to I mean, it just it was it didn't have the equipment. Worried about whether or not the school lunch program was going to still be available. So much anxiety. And it's not just academics. It's the friendship and the socialization that may be equally as consequential. You know, it's access to critical services like meals, school counseling, uh, that helps uh, the students stay physically and mentally alert. But I want to, I want folks to know that we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. We know what it takes to keep our children safe and our schools open. And we have the tools to do it. Last night, I laid out a plan for the fall to beat this pandemic. And basically, uh, it has six parts. Vaccinate the unvaccinated. And thank you for getting the vaccination. And thank your parents for doing that. And protect the, two is to protect the vaccinated. Three is increase testing and masking. Four is to take care of people with COVID. Five is to keep our economy going, and six is keep our children safe and in school, the uh, schools open. Now, any parent, for, now for any parent, it doesn't matter how low the risk of any illness is when it could happen to your child. But we all know if schools follow the science, and they are here, and implement safety measures like vaccinations, testing, masking, then children can be safe in schools safe from COVID-19. My plan does all these things. On vaccinations, it comes down to two separate categories. Children ages 12 and older, like Elijah, who are eligible for vaccines, and he got his. Children ages 11 and under who are not yet eligible. The safest thing you can do for your child 12 and older is get them vaccinated. That's it, simple, plain, straightforward. Get them vaccinated so parents Get your teenagers vaccinated. You've got them vaccinated for all kinds of other things, measles, mumps, rubella. For them to go to school to be able to play sports, they've had to have those vaccinations. Get them vaccinated. COVID-19 vaccine is easy, it is safe, and it's convenient. And we work to bring the vaccine clinics to our schools as well. Mayor Bowser's done one heck of a job. Said, no, you really have, Mayor. You're doing a heck of a job across the board. I really mean that. But um, you set up vaccination clinics about, in about 20 school sites, including here in Brooklyn, with, because you're going to continue through the month of September. So there's really no excuse to not be able. You, you can get vaccinated. It's not like it's so distant to do. You know, we're giving prizes and incentives to encourage children and families to get the shots. And look, their efforts are working. 65% of the children ages 12 to 17 here in D.C. have gotten at least one shot, like Elijah. That's incredible. That's one of the highest rates in the nation for children between the ages of 12 and 17. And for students here at Brooklyn, once you all get vaccinated, you're invited to a special visit at the White House. Now, I don't, I'm going to get in trouble with the Secret Service and everybody else. I'm not sure how we're going to mechanically do it. But I assume the buses can get you to the White House, and if we can't get you all in one room, we'll be out in the Rose Garden or out in the back there and 
maybe let you fly the helicopters or not. I'm only joking about that. I was just downstairs in the science class. It's amazing that you saw it, Mayor. It's amazing these kids are excited about building a vehicle that can land on the moon. I'm, I really mean it. And I asked them, I said, how many of you want to go to the moon? Everybody but one said they wanted to go to the moon. I asked how many want to go to Mars, and I think they all raised their hand as well. But it's really, and they're excited about it. Now, the best way for a parent to protect a child under 12 starts at home. Every parent, every teen sibling, every caregiver around them should be vaccinated. Children have four times higher chance of getting hospitalized if they live in an area with low vaccination rates rather than high vaccination rates. It goes for the home as well. There's a high vaccine rate, va vaccination rate in the home which significantly diminishes the possibilities. Now, if you're a parent of a young child, you're wondering when will the vaccine be available for them? I strongly support independent scientific view of vaccine usage for children under 12. But I've told them I will do everything within my power to support the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, on its ongoing efforts to do the science as safely and as quickly as possible. And our nation's doctors will keep the public updated on the process so parents can have a plan to give them the sense of what progress is being made. The vaccinations of our educators, today about 90 percent of school staff and teachers are vaccinated. We should have that at 100 percent. We're requiring vaccinations for teachers, where I have authority to require it, who work in U.S. government and, and uh, educators in Head Start, which is a federal program, because it's funded by the federal government. But I'm calling on all governors to require vaccination for all teachers and staff. Vaccination requirements in schools were nothing new. They work. They're overwhelmingly supported by educators and their unions. Now, on school safety measures. In our American Rescue Plan, which we passed early on, we provided the funding for ventilation systems, cleaning and sanitizing services, and critical safety measures to significantly reduce the spread of the virus and protect our children and keep our schools safe. And we will do whatever it takes this school year as well, especially, especially on increasing testing. We provided funding through the American Rescue Plan to implement testing in schools for teachers, staffs, and students, and that includes bus drivers as well. I want all, I want all schools setting up regular testing programs to make sure we detect and isolate cases before they can spread. I will mobilize American industry to produce nearly 300 million more rapid COVID-19 tests for distribution all around the country, including to schools that need them.